work on Maggie's farm no more. Uh, there's a fine line between... Uh, who's who's wearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edward G. Robinson and Bob Dylan. But uh, that's, of course, I'm singing in honor of our first guest, Maggie Gray. Artie, thanks so much for having me back. Uh, listen, you're here. You've been here three times. I, I I don't know what I did to deserve this great treatment. Well, don't, don't take offense to this, but why uh, why even have you been on? <laughs> I, I think it's I'm available. I don't know. I live nearby. Uh, uh, is that I, true? I actually live over in the corner. No, I live yeah, I live in Brooklyn. I live here. Well, that's not nearby. I mean, live by know. Pete. I yeah. do. What neighborhood do you live in, Pete? Ah. Do you have? A I don't live by Pete at all. Do you have a significant other? I'm getting married in July. Oh, that's right. You told me. That. Yeah, we're both engaged. I tend to block out things. <laughs> uh, Good-looking people tell me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, so uh, yeah, you know, we were just talking. We talk sports with Maggie. She's great. She's pretty. She talk no sports. She's perfect. <laughs> She's a perfect girl to uh, to marry and then cheat on with AshleyMadison.com. <laughs> <laughs> I have oh, a great future lined up for me. Yeah, no, but so we're just talking about this Dan Levitard. What's the guy's name? Levitard. That is, yeah, he okay. sold, I mean, think about how really inappropriate that is. He sold his Hall of Fame vote. And first of all, if you have a vote for something, I know, like, I have a vote in the SAG Awards. Can I sell that to somebody? <laughs> well, he gave it away. He gave, he it, gave away. it away. He gave it away. Gave it away to Deadspin. Deadspin came to him. But that's, yeah, okay. Here's the thing about idea. how he voted. I think that people believed he was going to make a joke out of this so that Deadspin would make a big joke out of this right. out of Why this didn't vote. they? They should have. But they voted in basically in line with all the other oh, uh, baseball writers. Oh, no, did they didn't have one steroid guy, Deadspin? Or like, I don't, uh, they, it was pretty much everyone they No, I they think they, they put Bonds and Clemens on, but yeah. a lot of writers put Bonds and Clemens on. Their, right. their totals, I think, are going to start start to creep back how up long, a little bit. How long before you think Clemens is, is in? Well, you have 15 years, right. so this was his second year. Right. So I think he's going to get in eventually. Yeah, they were both at about 32, 34. Yeah, which was about the same totals as uh, as last year. And you need 75% of the vote to get in, which is a high threshold. But I just think his attitudes are sort of changing about the steroid era, about the fact that steroids weren't illegal when they were doing them for, right. most, for most of the careers. The fact that you can't even – I mean, how can baseball writers be, really be, you know, the judge, jury, and executioner – for things that people have not admitted to, or I mean, if you have admitted to it, okay, then maybe that's different. But are we just going to assume? Are we going to take inferences because a guy had back right. knee and maybe was a jerk to the media? Yeah. I don't know. Listen, don't use this show as a stance for your crazy <laughs> views. <laughs> so it's liberal. Yeah. It's liberal Listen, views. we don't necessarily agree with what Maggie's saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, you're 100% right, because these guys, it gives them so much power. And a lot of these writers are smug guys. They're like cops. They were like nerds, and now they got power over athletes. Now they have power over athletes. I mean, Roger Clemens, how many of those those baseball writers look at Roger Clemens and see a guy who stuffed them in a locker? Yeah. You know? And they're getting back at him now. Like, no, you're not going in. I don't know about that. Although people do say that Barry Bonds was. You don't know about that. I don't know. People. You don't think, you, 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 ever, you, you know who Casey Stern is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Sliding think, over from MLB. You don't, think, you don't think he got stuffed in a locker? He's he was a, a wrestler. Small. Still small. Whatever. <laughs> he wrestled 105. <laughs> no, I don't know what he wrestled. Bantam, he wrestled. Bantamweight. He wrestled like third Casey. grader. Casey no. and I worked together at MLB. Yeah, no, you've worked with a lot of people. You've been all over the place. Yeah. You, you do, you're good at what you do. Well, you know, when you're trying to come up in this business and you're freelancing, you know, you got to cobble together a living. And yeah, try but to if work you're everywhere. a hot broad and you know sports... You know, I mean, you're in. Well, you're nice to me, you're, but that's subjective. That's me, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hot broad is the best thing I'll get called you all sound week. sound like a hooker talking to her pimp. <laughs> but you're nice to me, you're Monroe. Nice to me. More. Yeah, I know. It's like that. I'm a good-looking go broad. You're nice to me, Monroe. Shut up. <laughs> I take that as a huge compliment. Like, hey, Artie Light called me a good-looking broad. It's a good day. Hey, mm -hmm. Artie gave me the strap. <laughs> No, oh, that's terrible. Now, do you have that dynamic with Peter King? I mean, the pimp. And you know, we have. It's a lot more, mostly fart jokes, really, with Peter. Peter King's a knowledge. You're a great combination because he's a knowledgeable, incredibly knowledgeable sports person who's not great looking, and you're the direct opposite. <laughs> Little people oh. porn. Do, do you know it's Peter King? Listen to what he's saying. Little people porn. No, Peter says strange, <laughs> strange things. Why do you think he just blurted that out? Why do you think he blurted that out? <laughs> Is he here? Is he uh, you know, Peter's like a, he's a really um, but is there multifaceted about... guy. Like, there are some writers who write for Sports Illustrated who I have never had a conversation with them outside of the sport they cover. 
I even like asked them what the weather's like, and they're like, "What?" They're intimidated. Yeah, they're like, by it. no, they're, they're like, Clemens and Seven Youngs. No, I'm talking about big senior writers. They, you just, they don't either aren't interested in learning about people, or they just don't care, or they don't have any other interest besides their yeah. sport. Peter they're, is well rounded. No, Peter's, a, but he's also a very nice guy. Yeah, he's a sociable true. guy. He's a nice guy. And he never says no, which is nice when you need him for interviews and stuff. What if he came on to you? How would you react to that? <laughs> oh, come on, he's, he could be my dad. So what? That means you'd have sex. <laughs> <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> it would cost him. Let's put it that way. I want the but, cover. But, but honestly, what what do you think? You know him better than us. He was just sitting here during a commercial. The mics were live, and he said this: "Little people porn." <laughs> was he reading his like? Are Twitter? you disturbed? I, not really. I, I kind of know Peter, so I, I, <laughs> you want to analyze that comment? That Have didn't raise an eyebrow. Him? Have you noticed him babbling about that at other times? <laughs> no. well, what happened was, no, the people in midget porn, there was a story that they were upset and offended by the name midget porn. Oh. And someone said they want to be called little people porn. Yeah. Which to me is more condescending. It's, uh, I don't know. But Peter actually is taking a stance against the Washington Redskins name and is no longer using the term Redskins in his oh, really? writing. Or Who's not? Peter. What does he say? Really? Washington, Washington football team. Oh. No kidding. Yeah. Well, He's good for him. Because, well, listen, that is, I mean, listen. It's so offensive. In no other context is that accepted, except when you talk about the NFL football team. <laughs> it's incredible. Apparently, someone who has created some kind of product that wanted to use the name Redskins tried to go get it trademarked, and they couldn't because they said it was offensive. Wow. Yeah. It was like a Redskins potato chip or something, and the, oh. they came back and said, no, you can't. This is a slur. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So no. imagine if, that, if they get sued, yeah. like if they decide to sue and that goes to court. Right. Then the Redskins might lose their trademark, and every person in the world could put the logo on a T-shirt, and Daniel Snyder would have to change the name. Yeah, he wouldn't be making money anymore. That guy would deserve it. He seems like a moron. <laughs> uh, what do you think of RG3? How do you think that's going to end up? You know, I don't know how the relationship between the new coach, Jay Gruden, and RG3. I'd like to know what you think, yeah. John. Well, here's the thing. Jay Gruden was uh, hired today to be he the new was? head coach. He was? Yeah, they got a yeah. new head coach today. John Gruden's little brother. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait four, who's, was, four is John Gruden the guy I John. like? On yeah. Monday Night Football? Oh, I thought he John the, Gruden guy. Who does Jay the Gruden. Hooters Jay commercials? Gruden. I love John Gruden. One of my favorite human beings who's ever lived. Yeah. Has, he been, has he been on the show? No, he wouldn't come on here. Now. He you should get him during he, Super Bowl no, week. He, he, well, uh, you, you bumped him. He was coming on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> He's he had, had the Hooters he commercial. He had a conflict of course. with uh, his contract. Who did? Gru. Oh, okay. Um, but he, uh, Jay was four years younger. Oh, yeah? Jay was a quarterback in... Europe, right, and in the Arena League. So he was a bad. And he was also a coach <laughs> while being a quarterback. That's another way of saying he's a bad quarterback. He was good, but not good enough to be, you know, in the NFL. He's, he's like a, the Frank Stallone. He coached and played yeah. at the same time in the Arena. When League, I was which twenty, is pretty awesome. When I was twenty-two, I turned down playing quarterback in Holland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Biggest regret of your There life. was a team in Amsterdam. No, I know. In Europe. Yeah. yeah. Did Kurt Warner play for that team? Uh, no, I think he, he was for the playing London team. London Monarchs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Jay Gruden's hired. Everyone was saying, who would want this job now with the di dynamic going on with Daniel Snyder and RG3? Because it seems it's weird. there's some weird favoritism it's like, there. It's like the dictator in North Korea and Dennis Rodman. Same thing. <laughs> You're right. Same exact Getting thing. Yeah. You're right. Exactly I, feel like, I feel like Jay Gruden is well prepared for this, uh, or will be, because John Gruden, when he was a young you know, offensive coordinator was right. hired by Al Davis, right. who had a similarly overbearing yes. uh, presence in that organization. Al Davis John was Gruden. basically the scariest human being that's ever lived, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. He had a lot of power. Was he even alive? He was last amazing. Couple of years, was he just propped up in a chair. Oh. No, no he, offense. He he was yeah. I when I knew him, he was the sharpest guy. I'd ever met. They said he's a, he, uh, obviously he was a player and then Don't had this backpedal. <laughs> but then, but I then, to but then he kind of, then he, yeah, he was waning. Oh, but even by the, the way end. he talked, the way he looked with the slicked hair, he looked like he just put like a bunch of like Vaseline in his hair <laughs> and with those black, one of those black combs from the 60s. And the way he talked was intimidating. Yeah. He talked, because he talked like a mob guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, Get over there. Come on. The, you, know, uh, you loved him, though. I did love him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, he smelled great. Too. Really? Oh yeah. Look, no one's saying anything about smelled. that. Smelled. <laughs> you know, it's funny. When... Smelled outstanding. Why do you he think? Like, why like you, you could smell him from across the field. You he know, smelled so good. It's amazing when people <laughs> smell That's really true good. That's true. Pepper Johnson too. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to. I, I had a, an incident recently where someone smelled really good when they came on the show, and it's like, do I tell them mm. you smell really good? Was it Artie? Yeah. 
Yeah, she had a, well, listen, I, I better I'm waiting be. until this moment to it come out and say, Artie, it was you. You smell amazing. I, I better smell. I'm, I'm suing. <laughs> if I don't smell good, I'm suing Jean-Paul Gaultier. <laughs> Because uh, I shower and that stuff. So what do you think? No, Did wait, you ever tell Al I, Davis that he smelled good? Uh, no, everyone uh, was afraid to tell him that. Yeah. <laughs> we, got break, but we, got a, we got a break. We got a break. I got something else to say about Jay Gruden. Yeah, no, definitely. When we come to, back, we come back, you'll say it. Got it. Well, we'll probably forget it and she'll talk. <laughs> yeah. Maggie Gray's here <laughs> again. The Audio Line Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Maggie Gray here, a star of the Peter King Show. Uh, <laughs> it's Peter King's world over uh, at our place. <laughs> she is our, like, uh, Jay Leno and Richard Lewis on Letterman. She's been here. She's got the record for most most amount of time. Here. Uh, and what we appreciate. She was just telling me and John during the commercial who she thinks is gay. <laughs> Across all sports. In sports, and I don't want to get her. I don't want to get her. I don't want to get her sued, but <laughs> famous athletes. Rhymes with Shrebo. Uh, <laughs> these are all just theories. Uh-huh. Now, I saw Tim Tebow on uh, TMZ. TMZ interviewed him about it. He did a great job with as an analyst, and they asked him about it. By the way, the word anal is an analyst. I just want to point that out. Uh, and um, <laughs> he. Uh, Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> and they said, oh, what about that? And he goes, listen, sometimes you're just in the right zone. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. He sounds like Michael Jacks. He did, uh, yeah, he predicted the national championship game by within a point or All something, right. and people were amazed by that. Sure. I don't know how he's going to do the analyst duties required when – all he says are positive things. It's going to be really tough. Yeah. yeah because, he's, he's you know, I mean, you, guy. and you've been in that situation, especially at ESPN, in all places, really. Yeah. They want you to bring an opinion, and they don't want it to be the same as the person that's next to you. We know they you. got to team up with is Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> oh, can you imagine That's a sitcom. That? Listen, Stephen, I just think, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Stephen, listen, I just think you're wrong. I think the Cowboys and Tony Romo are going to have a good year. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mr. Babble Thumper. <laughs> yeah. You're a moron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, was, you want to talk about Jay Gruden? Okay. So, yes. so everyone's uh, questioning, you know, who's going to take this job with Daniel Snyder being so overbearing? Uh, who can handle that situation with RG three? When Groot, when John Gruden came in, you call him Gru. Yeah. When Gru came in uh, to Oakland, he was a young offensive coordinator, and he, you know, that's the last time any coach had success in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Right. Was when Gru was there. Yeah. Oh, and, absolutely. And yeah. he, uh, you know, he stuck to his guns. I mean, uh, Al Davis wanted everything to be a vertical passing game. John Gruden's a West Coast guy. He won that battle. John Gruden won his battles, right. and they cooperated and collaborated. And, you know, we had a great team. The biggest battle he won was result. in the Super Bowl when he was on Tampa Bay. Uh, I know. <laughs> But uh, but Bruce Allen was a senior executive there in Oakland for John Gruden collaborating with Al Davis. Now Bruce Allen is in Washington, yeah. and Bruce Allen is there with Jay Gruden to be collaborating with Daniel Snyder. And I think that Gru can talk to his brother, can give him some, you know, Gru some being John Gruden. Yeah, John Gruden can talk to his brother, give him some support, some <laughs> advice. Bruce Allen has seen it all and been there and seen this work before. Yeah. And I think he can facilitate that, you know, from an inside job. How much of I this think though, it'll you, work. How much of this do you think, though, really depends on whether RG3 wants to take the coaching, whether he wants to. Not that he doesn't yeah. take the coaching. I think he's a team player for sure. But if I don't he know. doesn't like the I offensive system. I don't know. System, I mean, have you been reading this stuff lately about all the inside I scoop? I'm, I'm, like, afraid to put too much eggs. And I obviously I respect know. all the reporters who are doing it. I don't think they'd go with it if they didn't think it was actually true. But I'm, I get worried about the nuance with stuff like that. The fact that, that they uh, made such a huge deal about RG3 not being involved at all. With the coaching search. In this coaching yeah. search. When every other quarterback, well, why every have other, them? yeah. Well, listen, every other quarterback out there. Jay Cutler uh, sat down with Mark Tristman before he was hired in Chicago. They're talking about Matthew Stafford sitting down with the guys they're bringing into Detroit. Well, Cutler's to probably got for that, that job. Cutler's got that Cavalry brought in his ear. You should be uh, have a say in this. <laughs> Most likely, yes. By the but way, that's the, my Christine Cavalry. That was good. That was good. Like Dead that. on. But I think also, especially no, but I, if but you're if, bringing an offensive guy, right? You're bringing yeah. in Jay Gruden, who comes in from the Arena Football League. Make fun of it for what you want, but 
that's kind of the way the NFL is going, at least offensively. It's, it's going towards these high-flying offense. Arena football. But there, are, there are things well, you can apply. And I think that if you – why wouldn't they talk – But then he was in Tampa to, and then – Yeah, but why Cincinnati. wouldn't you talk to the – why wouldn't you talk to the quarterback? Well, that's what I'm saying. Thing. Why are they so yeah. up in arms and in insisting that RG3 had nothing to do with it? If I, To me, that smacks of RG3 is not necessarily our guy. To me, that's like RG3 and Kirk Cousins – Either one may be the guy. We're going to see who's I don't know. Gruden had to say it. today. Jay had to say today, RG3 is my starter. Listen, it's already started. Oh, listen, really? why not? They asked him to it, say that? I'm a Giant wow. fan, and what this all leads to is the Redskins are going to suck <laughs> for a, a long time, <laughs> and I'm happy about that. How, yeah. did you, how did you learn so much about sports? You know, I would use that if I were dating you, the sports thing. Like, does a guy like during sex make you explain the infield fly rule? <laughs> <laughs> no, but when with runners on first and second. <laughs> when Andrew and I first met, though, he said the first. Who's Andrew? My fiance. Oh, my. When he's he's has never been jealous. Like he's so great. He sounds like a jerk. Or... <laughs> he's the best. No, but you know he could obviously be a little jealous about work with all men. I'm in locker rooms, whatever you think that is. Even though we've talked about this before, it's the most unromantic place on the face of the earth. There's what no is? place less romantic than an NFL locker room or an NBA locker room or an NHL you know, dressing room. Really? Or, oh, it's disgusting in there. Smelly, I thought, naked. Tell that to Deion Sanders probably got laid there about 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing he said was he said he's not worried about the people I work with. He was just saying, wow, you have something in common with every jerk in New York City. All they have to do is say, like, oh, do you like sports? And boom, now you have something in common with any any person. Well, in any I will park. say this sports has bombarded the world. It, it dominates radio and everyone does think they know about sports. Yeah. Oh, God, especially like women when a cute chick knows about the four three defense or something like shut up. <laughs> My well, God, you know. What's if it? they actually know what they're, what yeah. they're saying, it's impress it impresses me. Do you well, have a, a feminine of... side where you like dance? You do like line dancing? <laughs> do line dancing? <laughs> no, I probably should. <laughs> right. But I'm picking out wedding dresses now, and that has made me feel that's like a very. It's been a fun thing to do, a fun feminine thing to do. I am right. very feminine that though. I don't try to be like a jock. I was no. a tennis player. Well, well, that's why you're in good shape. I try to play still, but it's like, you know, I don't need to be, I'm, I realize I cover the game. I never played the game. I don't want to play the game, quite frankly. I yeah. think what you guys do out there is insane. I never, the played, time I, I never played tennis because in the, in, the, in the fourth grade, my father sat me down and uh, looked at me and said, you got to remember one thing. And I said, what? He goes, tennis is gay. <laughs> <laughs> Back after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We've got a couple of seconds, and then we're going to uh, uh, take a break, take a long break. Uh, you know, do some calisthenics and stretches. <laughs> I'm going to officially come on to Maggie and go, Andrew who? <laughs> You're a very beautiful woman. I admire your knowledge about the Packers secondary. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's my private part. It's actually our vows. It's weird. Don't, <laughs> don't bring up Andrew again. <laughs> the Artie Lang Show. Weeknights on Audience. Only on DirecTV.